This is Community Board Conversations, a block party workshop. My name is Brandon, and I'm joined by McKay and Sarab of Block Party. So we are a civic tech project focused on making local policy information easily accessible and bite-sized. Uh, our agenda today is that we're going to be doing a little bit of background on Block Party, what we are, a little bit of background on community boards, and then we're going to have a hands-on workshop where we're going to form small teams, brainstorm questions you have for community boards, and use Block Party's new semantic search to query transcripts for community boards across all of New York City. And we'll do a little share out and we'll have a little bit of Q&A at the end. So as I said before, my name is Brian Petruga and I'm one of the co-founders of Block Party along with Sarah Sachs. We have actually presented uh, here at Open Data Week for four years. Uh, before we uh, started during the pandemic and we presented two years during Open Data Week, we actually had a data through design exhibit last year and this is our first year presenting at School of Data. So we're really happy to be here. And the great thing is our team has grown, which is like one of the coolest things to start a small civic tech project and see it grow around you. Uh, and so we're full of data scientists, uh, full stack engineers, and policy researchers. But most of all, we're volunteers who want to make this information for community boards easily accessible and accessible for all. So uh, by a raise of hands, how many of y'all have attended a community board meeting? Oh, quite a few of you. But maybe we haven't attended as many as we would like. While some of us have attended these meetings, why are they important? Community boards discuss policies, initiatives, priorities, which impact our day-to-day -day lives. They act as a community's voice when brokering conversations with state and local governments, nonprofit agencies, and other organizations. Community board meetings might be inaccessible to many because of work, childcare, school, and just life. For these and many more reasons, it might be difficult to attend meetings each week or know what was being discussed. For example, one of the longest meetings that we have in our database was over six hours long. It was from Brooklyn Community Board 1 for a co combined public hearing and board meeting about development in Williamsburg around the River Ring proposal that was eventually approved for rezoning in that meeting. Now, how many people here have six hours to dedicate to not just one meeting, but multiple meetings being discussed for a major development that's happening in your community? So there are 59 community districts in New York City that have meetings every single month. Now it can be said that for democracy is not a spectator sport. And to become engaged in democracy, we must become informed. And that's where we imagine block party helping. We wanna make community level information more accessible to all. So you may think checking out meeting minutes would be useful if you are not able to attend a meeting. However, even then those can be quite limited. Many of those minutes are summarized without context, and they're available in PDFs across different online locations across the web. And if you would like to invest even more time or manual effort to find them at all, it could be possible you would even have to spend money to get the actual full transcript by filing a Freedom of Information request. So with all that in mind, where does Block Party step in and how do we contribute? So starting in March of 2020, community boards and other agencies began publishing their meetings on YouTube for public accessibility. Block Party, we grab those videos off YouTube, specifically the closed captioning information and create transcripts from them. We format the information to be more human readable. And when I say human readable, let's see an example of something that we're all familiar with that is often miscommunicated in those transcripts. We found 75 different ways YouTube can misspell the word COVID-19. <laughs> so when we grab those transcripts, we grab it from YouTube's raw data. And that raw data has all these misspellings along with other grammar and punctuation errors. So we take that and just fix those punctuation, fix those errors, and put it into a complete human readable transcript. And once we have that, we are ready to create what we call meeting highlights. We use a concept called extractive summarization, where we attempt to identify the most representative sentences and information in that transcript and construct a verbatim into a summary. We don't abstract what is said. We don't want to create a summarization of what is said, because this is actual people's speech and community board information verbatim minutes. So, for instance, we want to avoid sentences such as, can you please meet yourself, and instead focus on words such as education, vaccine, or housing. From these key terms, we structured what we call a taxonomy of topics. Our taxonomy is continually evolving, and any feedback on how we can improve this taxonomy is always welcome. We base it off some of the different community board committee names and statement of district needs and priorities. We organize these themes under categories relating to social, environmental, and governance. The taxonomy is also used to classify and tag each meeting. So if you're looking for a meeting on arts and culture or infrastructure or budget, these are tags are in our database per transcript to help it make it easier to query that and find the information that you're interested in. So we can actually look at these topics uh, identified in community board spatially. 
cycling through each community board to locate where a topic is being discussed. I will stay on the slide first for a little bit so you can see them. Hopefully it's coming through in the slide. Um, so infrastructure near the waterfront and Battery Park, housing being discussed often in Manhattan. Some of, the most, some of the most frequent topics are safety, transportation, and quality of life. And some of the least frequent topics in our transcript database are elections and human services. So we can look at the data at the high level across the city, but we can also zoom in and then have a discussion of what is happening on the ground. So this is from a discussion on February 17, 2021. Here's a few quotes from that meeting where we identified a high number of mentions for the word bike. The quotes show how a number of issues have emerged around the plan and how there is also a voice of opposition, particularly around how bike lanes would impact and take up parking for this community. So by having access to this data set for 7,000 transcripts that we have now, we can look at things high level, but we can also zoom in, hopefully get information for the topics and discussions that you care about. So our website started as an archive of all community board meetings that we have transcribed. Today, we have over 7,000 transcripts. We started wondering what tools we could build that would allow the community to better search through all this information. We wanted to build a feature that would empower the community to better search for information and interest. And with that, I will actually hand it over to McKay to present our newest feature. Thanks, Brandon. Hi, everyone. As you said, my name's McKay, she, her pronouns. And today I'm going to be talking through our new feature, Semantic Search, that we'll be focusing on in this workshop. So first I'm going to explain how Semantic Search works generally, then on our website, and then we'll go into the core of this workshop, which is going to be you using Semantic Search to explore issues that matter to you in community boards. So stepping back for a second, I want to lay the groundwork between the differences in traditional search and semantic search. So traditional search is frequency-based search. If you went into our archive and searched for the word zoning, then whenever you clicked search on the back end, we would be combing through our database of transcripts. And what you would get back would be the transcripts that had the highest number of occurrences of that word, zoning. It's fairly unflexible, so words such as zone or even related words such as land usage would not be returned back. Where semantic search comes in is it uses a method called vector embedding to look for connections in words that are similar potentially literally like zone or zoned, and then also conceptually similar like land usage. So whenever you search for zoning using semantic search, you get results that best match the intent of your search, regardless of whether or not you used the exact word that occurs most frequently. So I'm curious what would you all be interested in knowing about community board conversations? Yeah. Housing related conversations? For sure. Air quality. Air quality is a big one. I think that when there's a, there's a specific issue at hand, like a boat or like, for example, a casino project that are going to be done in a few years, to look by that, that specific issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how frequent certain topics come up every minute to kind of figure out, I guess, uh, how long it takes to solve an issue? That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested in how often uh, community boards are talking about the technology that the city is using, like automated technologies or different like contracts with data and technology. Like, Private sectors mm -hmm. That sounds like a, a great candidate search for using semantic search, definitely. So keep these ideas and others that you might have stewing around in your brain in mind for the workshop that's coming up. Now I'm going to show a few different searches that we did on our site using our um, new semantic search feature. So here's a brief animation of how it all works. And I'm going to stay on this slide for a minute. Um, so you can type in a phrase or keyword into the query. And then 
you're able to select a borough. So we have the five boroughs. We also have transcripts for the New York City Department of City Planning, or you can choose to search for all of those sources. Whenever you click search, the semantic search is performed on all transcripts in our test database. This feature is in beta, so right now we have transcripts for January of 2024. And you'll see the search cards pop up with the sentence that most closely matched your query highlighted in yellow. If you want to then go into the transcript and get more context around this conversation, there's a link to go to the full transcript and that sentence will be highlighted. That way you can look at the larger conversation that was happening. So here zoomed in is a search for flooding damage. You can see Brooklyn Community Board 9 and 14 are having some conversations about it. If we go to the full transcript of the first one from Community Board 9, you can see that they were having a conversation about flooding mitigation. Here's another search for outdoor dining. Um, I know that especially now as the weather's starting to get warmer, this is a conversation that's happening more and more in community boards. And here's a discussion on live music and outdoor dining permits. And this conversation's really interesting because the community board is talking about how cities, the city now grants licenses for outdoor dining. And they're wondering whether community boards should have a say in what businesses are permitted to set up outdoor dining spaces. And we have some musicians in Block Party. And so this search is for live music. And you can see an array of conversations here. Um, community boards are discussing things like permitting, street fairs, and space scheduling. Community boards are regularly having conversations about things that impact the daily lives of the residents of that community. And you can also sometimes use our database to learn a little bit more about some exciting upcoming events. So this is a search that we did for Block Party. That was the query. And if you're a member of Manhattan Community Board 8, you could look at this transcript and get a sneak peek of a block party that they're planning on hosting this summer. You've got the tentative dates and then some activities that they're planning as well. So before we go to the activity, I'm going to take us to the website. And here is Block Party. It's blockparty.studio. That is the URL. And one thing that I've been really interested in are the open streets this summer. As many of you might know, there were a lot of great open streets programs that were funded during COVID. A lot of that funding has now run out. So in many neighborhoods, including my own, open streets are coming back with a much more limited capacity this summer if they're able to come back at all. So that is something that I was curious to see what community boards are saying about. And I'm gonna choose all the boroughs I'm interested to see what the different community boards across the city are saying. When you click search, you see we get a max result of 10 cards. And when you highlight over each card, you can see which community board had that conversation. And it's highlighted here on the map. So Bronx Community Board 12, Queens Community Board 1, Manhattan Community Board 9, all are having different conversations about open streets. And then if you click in on the transcript, it brings you directly to the paragraph that most closely matched your search. But then you're also able to scroll up or down. If you go to the top, you're able to look at the Community Board's YouTube channel, Twitter. You can also download the transcript and this is what we're going to be using for the core activity of this workshop today. So we're gonna split everyone into teams. It looks like maybe four teams will be good. Um, we might just ask you at the front if you don't mind to move over to that table and then 
have everyone in groups. And we're going to focus on some hands-on time with semantic search. So you might want to start with picking one burrow to search for things in. And then if you want to expand from there, see differences in the conversations that are happening, you're welcome to do that as well. And I'd also recommend bringing in other sources. Community boards often have websites that have some information about them. Block Party itself has a, a full transcript archive outside of the January 2024 transcripts that the semantic search will return results for. And at the end, we'll save about 10 minutes to come back together and share something that we learned. But this is really going to be an exploratory time for us to see what community board conversations are happening around issues that we care about. And we'll be going around to helping yeah. helping teams uh, use the tool. And also, this is the first showing of Semantic Search. So y'all are seeing this for the first time. So we're really excited to see what you what you come up with and your searches. And very interested to get feedback as well. If yes. there's any features that you want to see added, um, if there's any unexpected behavior, we definitely would appreciate any any user feedback. Agreed. Cool. So with that, we'll start flowing around. I, I Question yeah. Sure. Uh, when uh, when you're returning a result, like what are what are uh, what text is embedded? Like what is is it like a sentence at a time or like a large chunk of the transcript? Sure, that's a great question. So when we break down the transcript, right, we do like new line paragraphs. So we actually do a vector embedding for every single paragraph within the transcript. So we can get down to like that high fidelity. So we're not returning like this much text. We're hopefully returning a little bit more to be a little bit more concise. Great question. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll start breaking around. Sorry to interrupt the conversation, y'all, but we want to bring it back together as the full group for a share out. Uh, so it sounds like there's been lots of great conversations happening. I'm wondering if anyone is willing to share like something that they searched for and found interesting information on, um, anything that they were surprised by while searching. Also acknowledging that the server uh, for Block Party did have some struggles. Yes. Like I said, this it is a, did. It did crash. It, this is a beta feature, so y'all definitely tested it. So thank you for that <laughs> in the best way possible. But yeah, any queries that were interesting, yeah. I think something of note is that we all entered the same query and we got different results. Oh, interesting. Right, because I actually would prefer that because right, we, we judge a model for like AI or machine learning, right, based on recall. Can you enter the same result and get the or same input and get the same result? And a lot of models are graded on their recall, right? If you ask it two plus two, does it always equal four? But in this case, when you're searching for a different phrase, it's going through nearest neighbor um, to see which result or which transcript sentence is, is most related to that result or to that input. And so it's based on what order it goes through transcripts and the nearest neighbor distance for um, the return. So I, I actually prefer that because I don't want to get the same result, especially as the data set gets larger and larger. If it returns the same thing over and over again, it's not getting any more intuitive for the result. So that's interesting. Any other interesting insights, questions, curiosities? Yeah. I think another like, sort of more feedback-y type comment is um, thinking about maybe adding like common searches. Um, because for example, like I'm in Community Boy 3 Manhattan and um, you know, I'm, just, I'm curious like what bars are opening up because I put them in the word bars, but I think that's a word that has too many different meanings. So there's sure. a lot of like, you know, error. And then um, my teammate was like, oh, put in liquor license. And then that got me much closer to what I was looking oh, for. You know what I mean? So just like mm -hmm. maybe common search themes I think would be a really interesting, like so people have a little bit better idea of how, of, what are better for? terms to search for? Interesting, because I guess since we're receiving all these search queries, we could just look at frequency of search terms. Um, and we can probably just post that like, uh, as, yeah, a, as an info, info option on there. That's, that's actually a great idea. Yeah. Sure. Um, one thing that I think could uh, have helped with it also, um, and if it's already a feature and I just didn't get a chance to use it before it kind of crashed, like right there. But, um, if there were a bit more like map interactivity, so I, I do really like that it shows the map side by side with what you're searching. I think that's pretty really cool. Um, but if there were yeah something that you could um, to help to give a bit more visual there, especially if you want to see how literally close 
to um, uh, the same issue that's happening and, like, across different boards, maybe across uh, different boroughs and districts, I think that would uh, really add to the strength of, of those two. Yeah, absolutely. We've, uh, in previous Open Data Week talks that we've given, we've done more spatial analysis on our side to look at what's being discussed, because you are curious. If I'm having this challenge in my community board, what other community boards are facing the same issues? And how are they solving it or how are they having discussions around it? We have imagined that the front end for this would be more sort of an analytics tool just to give people the ability to find these discoveries for themselves. So it's something that we're always keeping in mind to make the, make the data more spatial, because we're all just spatial thinkers. Um, it's something that we're definitely thinking about. That's a great, that's a great idea. Just to piggyback off of what she said and what you said, I think that adding an avenue for analysts and researchers to go in and maybe pull data sets through queries, mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm looking for liquor licenses across these boroughs. Put it, put it in, get the, the 10 results, or, and then maybe also query, okay, this is outside of that 10 results, and then turn it into a data set pull it. You know, so that we can analyze data on that on the same things. It's yeah, not that you guys made it into a transcript. It's possible. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great, that's a great idea. Any other insights, curiosities, or queries? I sure. Like the aspect that you showed us that you can sign up for uh, to subscribe to different reports. Yes, um, so there is a newsletter part. So after this talk, I will be restarting our little server that could. Um, so there is a newsletter. So Block Party, when we first started, it was just a way to subscribe to community board conversations and transcripts. So the main part that will always be a part of it is the newsletter. So you can subscribe for any community board that is, um, that is active on YouTube. Again, that's where we're grabbing this information to start with. If they're available on YouTube, we've been pulling them. And you can, we send out a weekly newsletter letting you know the most recent meeting that happened in your community board. And you can, you can subscribe to as many community boards as you'd like. Uh, and one thing that we would, uh, part of this talk that we really want to focus on is during the pandemic is how Block Party started, right? A lot of agencies, including community boards, started publishing their meetings onto YouTube, which made it accessible for us to even create this in the first place. And during that time, there was the emergency order allowing community boards to publish to YouTube. Since last July, I believe, that, that order ended. And some community boards now, it's a checkerboard of which community boards are still published in the YouTube um, and which ones are not. Now, certain community boards have challenges having technical abilities to record, hybrid, also host meetings in person. Uh, but we want, for a block party, we want to advocate for this information to be freely accessible. So for this resource to continue to grow, and I think there's a lot of other projects that are happening around this idea of taking digital meetings and making them more easily accessible, we have to advocate for our community boards to make them accessible through hybrid means. And so we would always want to, to advocate for that avenue for your, for your community board and for all community boards. And so for the last one, as you saw, uh, for our newsletter, you can contact us through email, through our Twitter, uh, and you can always sign up for our newsletter. And we want to keep the party going. And we want to make this information hopefully enjoyable. So thank you all so much for your time. Um, and we're also here for any other questions, too. But yeah, you can scan that and always get to our website. No? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Did you say that there was an a, a older website that had all of the other search, the regular search? Yeah, so on, the, on Block Party, there's still the archive mode, which has all 7,000 transcripts since 2020 available. So get to that through Block Party yes. Studio? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's still available under the archive. And that, will, that gets updated every single week. So every Sunday or Monday, we grab all the transcripts and update that database. So that's on a rolling update. Um, one of the analytics that I, I didn't expect to see was that um, you guys have both general board meetings and also community meetings. Um, part of the that's a particular comment made earlier about having maybe some more distinction about um, kind of what happens in general, because I know uh, there are quite a few people who might not know exactly what to go and expect. So maybe if there were some sort of um, distinction between uh, general board meetings and committee meetings, committee meetings seems to be way more specific than general board meetings, and also like, um, as I said before, common phrases. So maybe not just searches that people have done before, but what 
board, that phrases that board meetings use um, that might not be as good. So like if you wanted, like she said, to try to put bars for the liquor license step in, that's definitely more for the phrase we're here in a community board meeting pertaining to that subject. That that might help, like, but there might be some miscommunication between people that don't know much about it. I mean, no, that's a great point. I think what we're hoping for is as the semantic search gets more robust, that being able to type in phrases or questions will yield results. So you, a lot of times when you're looking for something, you don't know exactly what you're looking for. And our hope is that we create tools um, yeah, to decrease that time that you're spending searching and more time actually looking to find the information that you're interested in. But that's a great point. Any other questions, thoughts, ideas? Cool. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you all. Yeah.